So far I'd say our, our rounds are about even. It's a little bit of a challenge to figure out how I'm supposed to deal with Narga's speed when I'm using a weapon that can't just sit there and tank hits. But now we got Anjanath on the map. Be nice if I could lure them into a fight. Ow. Well, now Anjanath has noticed that Narga's here. I could have sworn they had a Turf War animation. It just hasn't triggered yet. Narga has... left the fight. At least now it's further away, and it's unraged. If I catch it by surprise, then I might be able to launch it into something for free damage. I'll do. Trying to get its tail. For the brakes on Narga, it's face, wings, and tail can all be broken or severed. Overall, we're getting some decent damage numbers with the Palace Blade. I haven't got a break yet, but it seems like we're doing pretty good damage on all of Narga's parts here. That move is similar to a move that Odegarn has where Narga will lunge and then do a backwards tail flip that has a pretty wide radius of hitting around it. You don't want to be in front of it when it does that. In Rage State, it can do its 360 tail spin twice. And I think it always does it twice. It should be able to do its big tail slam twice as well. We'll have to watch the tails. Ah. The tail has pretty big range on it. Rage mode is off. Let's see if we can get Narga to knock down the tree here. Alright, get over here, you sucker. Oh boy, that launched me pretty far away. Alright. Wow. Okay, that was enough damage to sever. Next target is probably going to be the wings. If we can get a wing break, 
it will knock Narga over and incapacitate it just like Barioth. I can't remember if breaking its wings causes it to stumble. But I guess we'll find out if we can actually get the break. Either way, we're doing okay so far. Still need to be careful of the damage, especially when it goes into rage mode. I think for a lot of people who are newer to Monster Hunter and haven't fought this particular monster before, running into it here in Iceborne is a bit tricky since its speed is a little bit surprising. But overall, once you learn the tells and its pattern, Narga's not too bad. If we can get a knockdown here, allow us to put some pressure and maybe try and break one of the wings. Didn't miss, but it wasn't quite a clean hit. Okay, I didn't think that was a good enough angle on the wall, but that works. got to break on the right wing. Just need to do the same on the left. Even though we didn't get the knockdown. Getting a break is still good. That'll get us more bits in the end. It's going to eat. No. Not yet. Try and tenderize the, the left arm, make it easier to break. But we're gonna need a quite a big opening to do that effectively. By taking off Narga's tail, it'll cut the range of its swipes a little bit. Not enough to completely negate him, but it will make it a little bit safer. When Narga gets exhausted, it will slip and slide around when it tries to jump. Kind of similar to Barioth, it loses its balance and opens itself up a little bit. Uh-oh. Puts it out of range, but we got a face break, so that's good. Might be a little bit counterintuitive in fighting this monster, but I found the easiest way to deal with it is to stick close. Most of Narga's attacks can be dodged around its body if you're in front of it or just to the side. It seems like one of the worst places to be is far away because it closes the distance so quickly. If you have a weapon that has a decent amount of defensive options, you can stick close and tank a lot of its big hits and wait for an opportunity to drop a hit on it. Exploiting things like the flinch shot and the wall smacks, like I mentioned before, are also handy for getting more openings to attack. 
but overall I think it's safer to be inside its range and just have to watch carefully for the tells on its attacks. It's still fairly damaging, so you can't be careless. Oof. Ah, just barely. There we go. Wow, 300. I ran out of stamina. I should have been paying attention. That would have been a free flinch. Not quite limping yet. I think it's close. With both wings and the face broken and the tail done, I believe that's all breaks. We just need to keep the pressure on and close this one out. Time-wise, we're looking at about 25-30 minutes. It's taken me a little bit longer as I learned sort of the best way to deal with Narga using a great sword. But overall, it's a fun fight. Part of the reason why I like the monster is it's it's pretty interesting to to battle. You really have to pay attention. Alright. See if we can get it close to the wall. That's close enough. Find out. Nope. Paratoad. Come on. Let's try that again. Part of Nargus' deal is that it moves around so much, you really have to time that poison or paracloud para carefully, otherwise it won't work. It'll just jump around. Ah. Bleed status is not good against this monster. Taking some big hits too. I think overall my damage is is pretty sufficient, but my defense could be better. Down. Oh, I didn't miss my true charge. Uh. Oh. 
Stay still. Wow, I'm surprised that hit. There's the double tail slam. When in rage mode, Naria can drop a tail slam, and then if it misses, it'll reposition itself and do it again. If the tail comes down and doesn't sort of crater the impact on the ground, it's a pretty clear sign that it's winding up to do it twice. But now it's limping, so we just need to follow it to its hiding spot and then we'll cap him. About 30 minutes. It's a little on the long side for a master rank hunt. There we go. That's an Arga fight in a nutshell. History is the greatest hunter ever, and I'll be right beside you to record it all. Speed and high damage. If you can learn its pattern and learn how to get around its attacks and keep the pressure on, it's a pretty doable fight. We'll go back to town and take a look at the gear that we unlocked for beating Narga here. Materials, we got black fur plus, cut wing plus, which we can get by breaking the wings. Three of them is good. Another lash, tail spear, shard, hard fang. The rare drop for Narga is a mantle. We did not get a mantle. Satiated attack jewel. Free meal and attack boost. It's not a bad combination. We also put a pretty big dent in our Valkana research. That's good. We're halfway there. Hopefully we can find some more Valkana traps during the next hunt. This is worrisome. Next up is the Scorching Blade. That'll be a hunt against Glavinus in the Wild Spire Waste. Alright, let's take a look at the gear we got for... Taking down Nargakuga. First up for great swords. Let's see. I can't remember. Oh, there's a Nargakuga tree down here. The hidden blade line. The Narga weapons have no inherent element. They have a hidden poison element, which you need free element in order to unlock. The main deal with the weapons is high raw and high affinity with no element. The Hidden Blade looks like this. It's it's had better designs in the past. This is sort of a iron, iron weapon copy with just some Narga feathers on it. Not the most inspired design. If we look at... Well, we could take a look at the Insect Glaive as well. Hidden Cane, which is a bit more of a distinct shape to it. Looks like this. Again, High Raw, 
high affinity and decent sharpness. Also, since I've been talking about it a little bit up till now, on the gun lance tree, if we go down here to the hidden line, the hidden cannon on my PS4 build, I ended up using for at least half of Iceborne. This was my go-to, a wide level 4 gun lance. I used this for a lot of the content in my PS4 save until I figured out that I liked long shot builds much more. But it's pretty solid gun lance. Good sharpness. The affinity is good for pokes. It doesn't help for shelling. But it's one of the early wide fours. Another being the Baryoth one. If you take a look at the armor, the Nargakuga Alpha looks like this. The Narga sets in all of the previous games have this sort of shinobi motif to them. This might be taken from one of the older games in the high rank set. But overall, it's a pretty neat combination of attributes, you know, this sort of body mesh and these thigh windows, which the designers like putting on here. But if, if you're into the ninja aesthetic, it's a pretty good set. The head has peak performance and piercing shot. Peak performance grants you attack up when your health is full. Piercing shot is increased power of bow gun, piercing ammo, and the dragon piercer for the bow. The chest piece has evade window and speed crawler. Evade window being good for boosting your iframes when rolling. Hands have Stamina Surge and Stealth. Stamina Surge ups Stamina Recovery Speed and Stealth makes it easier for monsters to lose sight of you if you want to avoid detection. The Waist has Evade 2, Evade Window 2 and Stamina Surge. And the Feet have Evade Window and Peak Performance. By equipping the full set and let's see. The full set is True Razor Sharp slash Spare Shot, which for melee weapons, True Razor Sharp greatly reduces sharpness degradation as you use your weapon. For ranged weapons, bow guns, Spare Shot has a chance to not expend ammo when you're firing at monsters, giving you free chances for free ammo. The full loadout gives us the set bonus, but also fully maxed out Evade, which dramatically improves your iframe window for dodging. It, it makes it so you can pretty much dodge through anything if you just time it carefully. Peak Performance 3, Stamina Surge, Stealth, Piercing Shot, Speed Crawler, and Handicraft is coming from my charm. Overall, if you're looking to build an evasion-based set, the Nargakuga pieces aren't too bad. You could build a full set and take advantage of its set bonus for something like dual blades or maybe longsword weapons that benefit from sharpness degradation down. It could be functional for insect glaive as well. Beta set looks like this. Pretty similar, the headpiece is different and some of the colored sections are a little bit different. But like all the other ones we've seen so far the set has pared down skills, but more customization slots. There's the mantle on the waist pieces. Another set I picked up as I was farming and doing side quests is the event one. You can look at this, the astral set, which is this sort of flowing celestial gown robe type outfit. This imparts wide range which applies items that you use to your whole party in multiplayer. Critical boost, level 2, which boosts the overall damage of your critical hits. The hands give divine blessing, which is a chance to randomly decrease damage. The waist has flinch free, which 
provides knockback protection against small hits. The Kinsect effect for orange is also boosted by this, which I didn't realize before. And the legs have weakness exploit too, which is increased affinity when hitting monster weak points. Overall, the set set total loadouts of skills for the Astral set are functional, but nothing too critical. The useful thing for this particular set is the Appreciation Blessing, which, when active, increases the odds of getting Appreciation Awards, which are different things you could use to unlock stuff as part of the event. What I'll do is I'll throw the set on when I, I'm doing the Gathering, event quests which have decent rewards. Thanks to one of them I was actually able to stack up a small pile of useful decorations. Nothing critical to my builds quite yet aside from a focus one. But if I'm doing all those farming quests I'll throw this on. It's pretty helpful. <laughs> 